Congratulations. Well done, my friend. Uh, that was uh, a fantastic experience. It was tough, but it was a fantastic experience. First of all, tell us about the experience. I mean, you live in a part of the world where you can practice a bit of open water swimming, don't you? Yeah, well, we did it for Deborah, a charity that um, supports poor children with EB. Yeah. Most, mostly children, but adults as well. Um, I lived down in Poole and someone suggested that it um, be a good idea if we had a team that would swim the channel. Mm-hmm. So I said, I know some guys and I'm a decent swimmer. Um, but I wasn't very good. When I, you know, my my when I say I'm a good swimmer, it was a Mediterranean and swimming pool. So when you get out into the open sea, it's a very different story. But I had nine months to prepare. I was right. training with some some ex Marines, so they they were they were a hard school to be part of. Uh, and it was just nine months of a of hard graft, getting up at five o'clock in the morning in the winter months, in the in the dark, swimming in the dark, and then the sun coming up, which is a being in the water when the sun comes up is a great experience. Yeah. And eventually built up to what we did. Um but but really looking back, um I thought I didn't, didn't I didn't think it'd be easy, but I thought I'd cope with it better than I did in the first hour I was in the water. Interesting. I was in the twelve thirty. It was pitch black. Yeah. The current the the that was quite rough I thought it was quite rough. I think it's not so much rough but the water wasn't consistent. And when you're swimming, you want to get into a rhythm and you get your breathing going. And the only thing you have to focus on is a little light on the side of the boat. And because he's guiding, he's, he's, the currents are dictating which way you go. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're concentrating on this little light on the side of the boat and your head's down. You're not looking where you're going. Um, and the first hour was, I was like, there was a couple of periods where I was like swimming in a, a jellyfish soup. I mean, you're getting handfuls of jellyfish wow. and swiping them away if you're swimming. It wasn't. It wasn't great. And then the second hour I did, which was um, a lot easier in daylight. Got it. Okay, fantastic. Well, then, congratulations. Um, in your nine months of training, so what was your exponential curve of improvement? Because when you start doing something for the first time, yeah. you, there is a huge improvement in anything you do, whether it's skiing or running or swimming, for the first few weeks or months. And how did it help your well-being, your mental health, and your strength? What did you do, What did you find out about your body and yourself, being of, obviously a former professional elite sports person? Well, oh, Chris, I've always worked out. I've always maintained quite a high level of fitness. Um, Mentally, I've always been um, been fortunate. I've been tough mentally throughout my my life. I, I don't underestimate that. I think I've been so lucky in having that because I do realise lots of people suffer. Um, I would say it was a good. There was a couple of I would say a couple of months before I felt I really turned the corner and I was going to be able to do it. You know, there was a few moments early on. I'm thinking just maybe I've bitten off more than I can chew here. Mm. Um, that would great encouragement encouragement from the guys that I got through it. Did you feel stronger? Because they say it's lazy lazy legs. You can you know um, you can expend unneeded, unnecessary, oh. unuseful, inefficient um, uh, strength uh, power in your legs, and you should save it for your upper body. No, it, it, you don't use your legs. Your legs are only for balance in the water. Right. Um, that was the way I was coached. And it's all your it's all your shoulders, and you gasp quickly. You know, you run out of breath quickly if you start to engage your legs too much. Got it. Um, I mean, the really best ones have a little bit of a kick, but they, they, they're not going for it as you would imagine. I, I don't use my legs at all, and that, I'm thinking, you know, that that would be one of my strengths. But it turned out to be possibly going against me because I've still got footballer's legs. <laughs> Chris, it was great. It was great being part of a team again. Yeah, if you spoke to a football player, what do you miss most about playing? The first thing they would say is playing the game, and the second thing they would say to a man, they would say being part of a. A group again with a yeah. banter, being part of a team. 